Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts, Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Three Devs and a Maybe. I've lost track of what number this is, but um, I think, I don't know, maybe... Any ideas? Like 18 uh, or something? Something. Uh, uh, 19, I think. 19. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. I didn't think we'd ever get past like three. But um, yeah, pretty impressive. But, uh, yes, 19. Yeah. So uh, right, let's start off with, um, let's go around and see how everyone is. Uh, Lou, how's your week been? Hello. Good evening. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm extremely busy at the moment. I spoke to you guys about that, haven't I? Uh, sorry I couldn't make last week. Right, no um, and to be honest, I nearly didn't make this week either, and I don't know about next week. But yeah, um, yeah I've probably got about four projects on the go at the moment, with about another three that I need that I need to start fairly soon. So uh, you're so lazy. <laughs> are these private projects, by the way, or are they are they for your your job? Four four work, three are private. Although although one of those now has actually oh, been fantastic. put back a few weeks. So right. uh, that's awesome. So, yeah. So when it rains, it's poor. I don't know where it's all come from, to be honest. But you know, literally, just as the sun starts coming out, suddenly I'm absolutely ran with work. So, but can't complain. Enjoy That's pretty cool. What, what are you able to talk about? What kind of jobs they are at the moment, or are they? Is it still under wraps? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the, the well, the first one that I've still got going is a lot is the um, the electrical company one. But I'm not currently working on that because we're still waiting on the client to come back with content. And stuff. Yeah, okay. content. Fairly Some standard, yeah. Story's been the same tomorrow, on that yeah. one for, yeah. for about a month now. It's just one of the ones where they kind of they came to you and they said, "Oh, we've got a really urgent need for a website. It needs to be done tomorrow. So you build it by tomorrow, and then you sit and wait for them for three months for content." Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it was something like that. But so Laurie Lipson's so good, though. Text. I mean, who needs content when you've got Laurie yeah. Lipson? Yeah. yeah. Donald the Duck. And so who can't speak images. Latin anyway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the main one at the moment that I'm working on is um, is for an for an alarm security company, and it's an e-commerce project, which is my first uh, foray into that kind of thing. So uh, that's taken up most of my time, and I'm building Wicked. all the um, all the shopping cart checkout, all that stuff facility from uh, from scratch. And it's, oh, you're yeah, doing it's, that. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, it's uh, it's. It's something that I hadn't done before, and it's something that that I really want for the old uh, the old P word, the old yep. portfolio. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's a, a job in itself. I tell you, that's where um, a lot of the security stuff that me and Ed looked at last week, which I'm sure we'll yep. get onto, um, has come into play. And just just the amount of stuff that crops up when you're testing it, you, you just test a certain part, and then you realise, oh God, I need to do that now to make sure that works, and then that works. So awesome. That's and that. you're building and that on on top of your own framework, I guess. I am, yeah, yeah. Wicked. Which is which has been a treat because um, the good thing about having so many projects on the go at the moment is that each project requires something different. So I'm constantly building new tools onto it, which is yeah. which is really cool. But I started another one today, which is um, it's for I don't know a quantity surveyor. It's just like a property website. So it's not it's not a, a very long a very long one to build. I don't think it's just a case of getting it done. But it needs. Yeah. Um, Need CMS and all that stuff, so uh, that's that. And then um, an old site that I made for a golf colleague um, a little while ago. That I'm uh, I'm remaking that one. I'm <laughs> I'm in need of some golf stuff, so I've stuck up a little yep. deal with him to um, to get his site done and and stuff. I just put a tweet out actually. So I transferred his domain over. Was this from, the IPS tag one? Yeah, from from names co to um, <coughs> Go Daddy. <No! laughs> Excuse me. And. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it literally yes. went through in about fifteen minutes. So, uh, so that was good. You don't use GoDaddy, don't you? Sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I don't. I wish I did. Um, I had an issue. Yeah. I, I've had issues with bloody the main. Sorry. Yeah. Say bloody. Um, it's a podcast. It's not radio. Um, yeah. I had an issue because all my domains are on on one on one, um, and then one of the clients is kind of they want to do all their emails with. Uh, Outlook or Live Mail or whatever it is that Microsoft are calling it these days. So I had to change all the. Uh, all the, all the mail tags and stuff pointing over, but I don't have access to all the ones that I need to for for that. So I'm going to have to kind of register somewhere else, transfer the the, the name servers over there, and then do it all from there, which is a bit of a bit of a ball ache. But yeah, hover, 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 hover.com, hover.com, huh? Hover.com, hover.com. What? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll check that one. They what? are awesome. <laughs> hover.com. Do you have to pay them any money to use their services? Because I tried signing up with Memset, 
but they need me to buy something before they let me. Uh, no, you can just you can just uh, you can just transfer them over, and they, oh, they give you some like uh, I think they give you a year out of it as well, or something. Okay, so they're oh, awesome. awesome. Sorry, sorry, for, uh, Lou. Yeah, sorry, Lou. <laughs> 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 you got your sidetrack that. That's all right. That's cool. Um, I'm just trying to think where I got to. So there's that golf one. Uh, another another golf friend of mine. That was golf friend, not girlfriend. I'm a married man. I didn't get my words wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he um he's basically looking to get himself some sponsorship because he wants to go for the old pro circuit, the European tour at the end of this year. So he's been putting a big proposal together and wants a website for that. So um, that's all going through. So I'm working with a designer of uh, where I work to try and get stuff put together for that. That'll probably be kicking off from about next week. And then uh, the other one is from him. It's just, um, I don't know, it's a dance school thing, but that's, uh, that's been put back now. So thankfully I can focus on, the other 25 things I've got going on at the moment. So, is, it, is yeah, the dance school the, the, the dance school that you were at last week? It was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's amazing where you can pick up contacts, to be honest. It's brilliant. And wherever you are, there's an opportunity for a website. Yeah. So um, as soon as that floristry website of yours is ready, let's crack on. <laughs> what about uh, rivercruises.com? Will that be uh, coming up soon? Uh, River Cruise Artistry. <laughs> whatever it was what was it what was it i should know the answer to this but what it was, was it cottaging. i was doing again it was cottaging wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. is that is that a technical term that i should know <laughs> um <laughs> or am i showing my naive is ear? it on let me have a look on over it'll be on urban dictionary yeah urban dictionary everything you'll be uh you'll be fine is this is this going to be worse than ed's dreaded t word from last week <laughs> the t word <laughs> dun, what, was dun, dun. what was the t word from last week Right. Uh, it's um, it, it's it's Brad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh. Ed wasn't aware that was a bad word. I know that's that's. I'm really I'm sorry if it offended anyone. Like, what was the one from a couple of weeks ago as well that, that Lewis was trying not to laugh at? I can't remember what it was. I it genuinely was... wasn't. You you've made that into something it wasn't. Crazy. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, where is it? It was oh. it was nonce or something like that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, I, I genuinely didn't even think of that. <laughs> you, I mean, you started laughing just after you said it, though. So it was, yeah, <laughs> not intentionally, and it wasn't for that reason. I can't remember the context of the conversation now. <laughs> Either way, it was amazing. Thank yeah. you. Oh, Podcast exactly. gold, eh? <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. So I am still cracking on with a few bits while I'm while we're recording. So apologies if you hear my keyboard going. No problem. No worries. So that's it from me. All right. How about you, Fraser? Good week. Uh, well, it's, yeah, it's been it's been really really busy to be honest. Um, yeah. Obviously, I've been away for for the last three weeks, so it's kind of been balancing all that with a bit of freelance work and, and work in the office as well. And I know I keep saying every time every time it comes around to it, but this project that I've been working on for the last year is pretty yeah. much a hundred percent done and handed over now. I say hundred percent. Oh. I still got like about half a day's work left to do on it. So another month, yeah. Yeah, so, at least yeah, round it down. Yeah. And the only thing is as well, because I'm working from an Evernote list as well, so kind of I've got this this list and this goal in my head of, oh, I've got like five more points to do, and then and then, it, then I can wash my hands of it, then every morning I'll log in, and then it'll come up with like a little blue icon saying, oh, this, this list was updated at three o'clock in the morning, like where the guy who whose project it is is out <laughs> drinking, he's like, yeah, this would be a really good feature to add on, so yeah, all these new new features that, that get added on, but it's it's getting there anyway, so it's it's been all right. Yeah. What about um, moving away from web for a second? Like yeah. with all your training and stuff, be yeah. careful how I word this. But your fitness must be like through the roof. I'm guessing in the minute. You it's must be not, right like, peak. It's, it's not where it needs to be, or where I'd like it to be. To be honest, because I'm getting up at well six o'clock every morning before work to spend 45 minutes to an hour in the gym. Um, but by this stage, I kind of wanted to be doing at least two or three hours a day. So obviously before work, and then a couple of hours in the evening on the work machine as well. But it's it's not really come to fruition yet um we've we've had all the the stress of trying to get the boat shipped out to the u.s for the start of the race as well so that's been taking up a lot of time um, but that's finally going a week today so next wednesday the boat will be in a container um on its way to the back of a, a cargo ship but it's yeah it's it, once that's out of the way i can start ramping things up but it, i'm probably yeah i think i'm fitter than i've ever been before but wow. i still i still need to to go further yeah yeah well, that's pretty cool it's not um, <laughs> <laughs> what about um, musical umbrella as well? What's where's that? Mu, uh, Mu, yeah, that's literally gone gone today. We we handed the the site code over today. 
Wow. Um, and gave me a database dump. So yeah, that's been a long time in coming. So for, for the people listening, this is a project that Michael was working on um, when when I was working at the same place as Michael, and then Michael left, and I I took the project over. Um, and it's 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 not been a horrible project to be honest. But that was this could be a good segue onto onto the topic. But we've been um, it's it's written in Code Igniter, um, so it's actually been quite enjoyable to to work with because I do like Code Igniter. Um, but yeah, that project was it kind of it came to to what we thought was the end about six or seven times and then we'd hear nothing from them and we'd be expecting to kind of like hand the code over because they wanted to take the code and host it themselves so that's all fine um, but it came to like a natural end yeah like six or seven times and then we'd hear nothing for two months and all of a sudden we'd get a, an email with a, a word document and oh can you just quote for, for these points and there's like a 20 page word document <laughs> so it, that happened yeah numerous numerous times and then we assumed the same was going to happen this time where we finished the last load of amends and then they sat on it for a while, um, and then yeah, all of a sudden they said, "Okay, yeah, we're happy with everything, uh, all done. Can we have the code, please?" So yeah, we've we've signed the code over to them today. Oh man, that must be satisfying. It is. It was kind of to be honest, though. I, I did enjoy working on it, um, and yeah. I think it's just because it's a coding night project, and again, I really love coding night. So it's yeah, it was it was just a pleasure to work on. Yeah, yeah, I got it in my head that we'd done that in Laravel, but now I think back, yeah, it was. No, uh, yeah, that was pre Laravel, wasn't, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, not pre pre the existence, but pre us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool then. Yeah. What have you yeah. been working on? Me. Uh, still just, uh, well, it's my last week of term now for uni. Oh, boom. So I've got, uh, other than exams, I'm pretty much done now. So, uh, But last week was, I had to get my last assignment in and that was stressful. That was pretty much a week of um, working till midnight each night. Oh, uh, just by the end of it, I was just, living off caffeine basically and yeah it was it was a really weird one because it's like a group group project yeah so, and it's a bit of a lottery who you get so you know it's all kind of different skill levels and i was probably in the middle but um it was it was just insane like trying to bring your code together and like splitting up tasks and and it's really hard when you get to bits like you where you think you do it a better way so yeah it's pretty can be pretty um contentious at times but uh it's sort of like beating someone up in the background it's like a lot of background noise <laughs> sorry i was <laughs> shuffling my chair sorry right, no worries Sorry, got the squeaky chair okay um no worries um yeah so that was yeah that was great to get out of the way it was a lot of work and in the end wasn't really happy with the outcome but it wasn't bad. It, it should get marks and stuff. So that was yep. that was good to get that out of the way and almost done now. And uh, but yeah, managed to pull a muscle in my neck just showering the other that? day. Showering, showering. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd love to give you some really exciting story, but um, I think that stands for itself, mate. You don't need to explain. I'd love now, to tell you <laughs> something exciting in the bedroom happened and oh, one thing led to another, but it didn't. It was just showering by myself. So uh, yeah, that's wow, a treat. Your anatomy were you washing at the time? <laughs> <laughs> intense shower uh, no <laughs> extreme <comment>. shower it's got to get it clean <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so that happened but yeah i basically can't move my head so but you know being a programmer it's not really an issue because i'm going to stare at my computer and program away so yeah that, that's my week pretty much nothing uh, really exciting <clears throat> which leaves ed man hello you have you done anything exciting this week? Uh, I met up with Lewis on Thursday. Yes, we had yes. a day of security, which was mm. quite fun, and then a nice drinking right. session afterwards, which was even Boom. more fun. Yeah, um, the day after it wasn't. The day after it was, <laughs> and then we and then we went out again on the Saturday and did it all again, pretty much. Wow. So that's how how it rolls. Uh, yeah, it's been really good that way, security wise and stuff. I've done a couple of blog posts on it as well. Um, yeah. Did this? I did one early, late last week about SSL certificates because I've I've played I've I've set them up and everything, but I've never really looked into them properly. Mm-hmm. And about like self signing them to so use self signed SSL certificates and yep. how you set them up with um en- with a uh, nginx and how to set up with Apache and stuff. And it seems it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, it's just working out like each of them have a different way of doing things and stuff. Um, Am I understanding that correct? Are you saying that you could? create your own SSL certificate. Yeah, so, so there's, there's SSL certificates are weird because there's two things it does. So firstly, a, a, a signed one from like a CA, so that's like a, a certificate authority, stuff like yeah. DigiSign and, and like GoDaddy even are. You know, yeah. So they give you the, you get the encryption 
which we like, but you also get the ability to say this per this server, the identification, so it's the validation that this server is legit. Right. Um, so with a self sign one, because you're signing it yourself, you don't you get the you get the security, but you don't get the fact that you know the person on the other side may think you know that they, they'll get a warning. You'll be a horrible red warning yeah. come up saying, "Oh, this server, you know, may be you know compromised yeah, or it right. may not be valid." So, but to be honest, uh, there's, I've read a lot of line and stuff, and it seems like self signed certificates because of SSLs in a bit of a weird state. So, if you do self signed certificates for your for your own projects and stuff, and you know, like say you're in like an intranet type environment with a big company, and you just you know say that I know that this certificate's legit, it's actually more secure and it's free, and it's great right. for development and stuff because developing with um, HTTPS and stuff can be a bit of a pain locally. Yeah. And doing this, you know, like I've got it now with Vagrant and stuff. I now create a self-signed certificate when I create my box on Vagrant. And then I'm able to work in both HTTPS and HTTP modes locally. So it makes then the transition to a real server with a, with a certificate nice and easy. Yeah. Um, nice. And then after that, I did, today I've just released a new post on securing sessions. Because me and uh, Lewis spent quite a long time on Thursday looking at Ooh. session security. Yeah, and um, learning quite a few things together. It was quite interesting. We were literally just Googling and like having a good time. Just so sad. Sounds so sad. Having a good time just learning about security in sessions. So The I, results were good, weren't they? They were good. They were. Mm. And, um, and then this blog post really just documents what we learned and stuff and kind of in a session handler way, being able to put them all together. And Because I, I did find it hard to find like a definitive resource online about like a PHP implementation for how to securely do session management. So, uh, Lou, was that uh, was there something that triggered this? Did you have an attack or something that made you think you had to kind of re-look into the uh, uh, session stuff, or it was just something that had been on your mind, uh, uh, something to do? It, it well, it, it's partly because um, this this big framework project that I've been working on is something that I want to I want to build on going forward and use in all pretty much all the projects that I work on. So. Yeah. Obviously, an important part of that is to make sure the security element is as bulletproof as possible, and especially yeah. now that I'm using it as part of an e-commerce project as well. So that's yeah. that's what that's what prompted it. I know I knew I was doing like everything that that I was aware of of doing, but doing those two podcasts about the security made me realise that there are a lot of other areas that needed attacking as well. So yeah, yeah. if you pardon the pun, <laughs> uh, were, were there any any light bulb moments when you were chatting with Ed the other day that you thought? Oh, crap I, I really need to be doing that that i'm not doing or was there any any of that or was it just kind of like general okay yeah going forward when i start implementing this then i need to be aware of this or is it did you have to go back and, and rework some of your your code or oh yeah i've gone i've gone right back into everything i've i've basically we we've made this little um clean function that uses utf8 encoding that ed yeah, you spoke about that the other week didn't you ed we yeah. we, we made that and um I've also changed it now so that again on after discussion with Ed, everything that goes into my database is um is unfiltered apart from stuff that goes in from a text area like a blog post that yep. that needs the HTML stuff so yep. with that I use um this package called HTML purify which is quite good at making sure that that's safe so I had to go through and basically write a few functions that detect what's being what's being posted with every form basically yeah uh, so yeah, detect what's coming from um, what's coming from a text area, and then purify that, and then the rest of it can go straight in, and then coming back out, detect everything that's not from a text area, and then put the clean function on that to make sure that no um, no dodgy XSS stuff been chucked in there and and stuff. So that that's been pr- probably one of the biggest things that's come off the back of last Thursday working through that stuff, but. We also did this like generating your own fingerprint thing when you when you when you log on so that no one can hijack your session and stuff like that. So it's yeah. it's kind of an MD what was it MD five hash of your um, your IP address and something else, and uh, that worked a treat. That's really nice. Uh, we we messed around with cookies. I'll probably let Ed explain the problem we had with this. That's <laughs> that was fun. We spent it for forty five yeah. minutes trying to work out the domain, like setting up the correct domain, just to find out that local host because of for some reason it's actually written in the spec that you need to they're designed cookies are designed to work for second level and down uh that URLs. So stuff like, you know, your site dot TLD, you know, edman dot com, three ads and a maybe dot com, or IP addresses. But if you do it say just local host it yep. doesn't actually work Dev, if you develop uh, locally with cookies. There's a problem with it. 
No so way. yeah, it's a it was one of these hit like small pains that like it's a massive pain, but it's one of these ones that are just so like small little issue that then and it's also different between browsers and stuff. So the best way to do it, what we did in the end, was we just made because we're using like uh, Vagrant and stuff, and you know even like with Mamp and everything, you know you use local host. It's just to have a redirect in your host, like you know like local dot dev. And yeah, Lou dot Lou dot everything's Lou dot dev now. Yeah, something. and then you just you know one se- uh, two seven dot o dot o dot one, and that yep. way then you know for certain that cookies will be able to be registered and actually stored and sta- and saved and right. persisted throughout sessions. Another thing we did we um, throughout various stages of the login process regenerating session IDs. That is well. a huge one. That's the one yeah. thing of the last two episodes on security I took out of. I can't believe that I've never regenerated a session ID. Um, yeah, that's scary. And that's the one thing that like, I'm trying to address in like the, it, it, it's one of those things where you need to think about the fact that I, I mean, it's easy to kind of lose sight and, you know, just to say, oh, sessions just work, you know, and that's it and they're secure. But like to think about it, that really what, what's happening is the way it's identifying you, that user who's authenticated is just by an ID. Yeah. So if someone's able to work out that ID and then pretend to be you, they've got every, you know, they're authenticated, they're hijacked into your session. So stuff like, you know, when you successfully log on, you should regenerate your ID. When you uh, try and, you know, like you do something that's called like an, a, a user privilege thing, such as like changing your password, you should regenerate the ID just yeah. to make sure that someone, if they did find your password or your ID, say before you, that you logged on, so they found your session ID before you yeah. logged on, when you've actually logged on and authenticated, they don't know your new one. And that's right. just so it stops like cross-type scripting attacks and stuff and, yeah, so that was the big one. Like, I never use session underscore regenerate underscore ID with true, which then removes the old one. It's but definitely going forward, kind of bearing in mind when I'm designing stuff. To keep we had to do out. quite a bit of debugging there, didn't we, to um, to stop other session elements from. Yeah, we, we, being yeah, we had a bit. Yeah, and I think that's the, again the low. It's it's working locally with cookies is a bit of a pain, but fortunately, we yeah, with this host thing and stuff, we were able to to work it out. Yeah. No, it was a it was a valuable day. Both both got a lot out of that. Nice. Yeah. Um how about anything else, Ed, in your week? Uh, uh not really. I mean that just work and then yeah, just that really. I've done it, yeah. Nice. I guess it's time then for hot picks slash hot tweets slash hot quotes. Why would we do hot? It's just picks of the week. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> hot hot pick. <laughs> nice. Uh yeah. Do you want to go uh, first? Go for it. No, no, I, I thought you... Oh, do you, you want me to go first? You could go first, sir. Okay, well, unfortunately, I've done my usual because I just had a bit of a crazy week. I had kind of had to just do a bit of research before the podcast. So these are a bit at random, but um, uh, some taken from the latest .NET magazine and, and some just taken from Google. But uh, I shall pass these around on Skype and then explain to listeners what I've got. So um, first one I've got, I think is like... Um, it's like a lightweight version of, of uh, Lazy Load, which I'm sure most people have used before. Um, but I think I think their strap line is something like is the files less than like one k or something. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's just quite a nice thing for Lazy Load. So we'll put that in the uh, in the show notes. Um, cool. The next one I've got is has anyone come across the phrase of mobile shelves? The what? Uh, mobile shelves. No. So, do they sell them at IKEA? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm no. gonna check out the link. But basically, you've got like a it's like a like a snap grid type system. But if you um, if you click on the screen and drag it left or drag it right, it's just like a clever way of saving space. But like I say to Ed, I, I think it looks really cool. But I guess the issue for me would be how intuitive it is for a user. I mean. You know, I've just told you guys to, you know, click and drag. But for anyone who yeah. doesn't know, I don't know how good that would be. But oh, I see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, I could have used that. Yeah, who's it's clicking? Nice. Yeah. I can who's just hear clicking? this clicking. Yeah, that's me playing with it. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, what's this clicking? Well, that's quite cool. <clears throat> I could have used that a, a few months ago. But yeah, no, that's really good. It's always that, isn't it? You always find something after the fact. Yeah, like, yeah, that would yeah. save me so much time. And there's no way I can be asked to go back and <laughs> <laughs> refactor that in. Uh, the other one I've got is, uh, I think it's quite a popular one, actually, and I've seen it before, but never really used. But I think it's just an alternative to, I'm sure most of us have used uh, Google Graphs. But this yep. is um, chart.js, uh, uh, not chart.js, chart.js.org. 
And um, yeah, just an alternative to that. Do you know if it uses like SVG or does it output with Canvas? I don't know. I'm sorry. But um, I just kind of looked at the effects and thought they were pretty good. Can you see from the source? I don't know. It looks pretty nice, though. Yeah. Well, I thought it looked quite good. I've got to do quite a lot of work with Grass at the moment. And I, I must say, actually, the, group, the Google one is brilliant. And, you know, you can't fault it. But I like some of the effects on there. It looks pretty cool. So. With the Google one, does it is it uh, offline version? Or do you require always to hit their server? It's like a API type thing. Yeah. Um, I think you do need... Yeah, it's an API type thing. Yeah. Pretty sure. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks and I use it. I'm going to use it again tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. See, this looks quite cool because it's all locally. And the grass yeah. look really nice. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty. I think it's like, have you ever heard of D3.js? Ah, uh, rings a bell. Yeah, data driven document. That's cool. Like, you right. could do some crazy stuff, like, with docu- like, uh, like visualizing data and stuff with that. People okay. do some insane stuff. And it, I think that uses Canvas, but it's right. pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Let's put it in the show notes as well, then. Yep, will do. Uh, the next one I've got is uh, Stream Table. Um, which basically, I think, you know, if you're building like um, like Ajax applications or uh, something like that and you just want nice, quick, if you want to go like a table and you want to paginate so you've got like 10 results and stuff like that. But say you've got a huge table and it's got like 500,000 results. Obviously, you don't want to wait for the page to load all those results. You know, you just want to load the first 10 and then, but this, what it allows you to do, it loads the rest of the results in the background. So it gets you your first 10, and it's still loading all the other results for you. And then you can see the loading progress, and you can go to the next page once they've loaded. I guess kind of almost like a lazy load for, like, database results. But I thought that looked um, looked pretty slick as well. And the other one I've got, the final one I've got, is, uh, like, a content switcher. Um, again, just for, you know, very nice kind of, like, live loading of uh, content basically you can uh, select what kind of effect you want and um yeah you select the, the nav links and the new content's brought in using whatever effect you've got so there's oh, probably a thousand cool. I like yeah that. yeah i thought it was pretty it's nice funky yeah yeah so they are my uh, my hot picks anyway for this week so very nice sir who would like to go next and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying quite because unfortunately I, I didn't come armed with any. I'm, I'm no, afraid. I can I can go next. Yeah, go um, So along with all this security stuff, which is the buzz at the moment, um, I, I yeah. was looking on YouTube for some like lectures and stuff just to get an idea for you know what I should be looking at with the web security stuff. And there was this one from this uh, woman called Dr. Susan Loveland, I think, and it's how to hack a website. And uh, I'll put it in the show notes. And it's just a YouTube video, about 45 minutes long. It just She goes through some of the common ways that, you know, hackers are able to get into your site and stuff, right. and which is pretty interesting and pretty cool. Um, the next one is a really cool link that I found today on Hacker News, and it is amazing. It's a GitHub repository that has a list, pretty much a listing that's updated um, that's like free programming books. That are available online to so say like I want you know what all the free program books that you can get like you know for PHP you can go on this and yeah so that's pretty cool uh, and then I also got the heartbleed.com so I'm sure you've all heard about the fun fun thing going around the last couple of days which is the invulnerability and open SSL. It's a bit close, a bit close yeah. to the bone, this, isn't it? The Everything open, we've been doing. yeah, open SSL and you know this buffer overrun type thing or buffer flow thing that's a problem. And yeah, hope, hopefully you've all updated your servers and stuff just to make sure, especially if you well, if you're definitely using SSL, uh, you know, certificates. Um, so I'll put that in the show notes. And then the last one is guzzle.php. And yeah. guzzle is like request that's in Python which is the clean way of being able to access APIs, you know, with passing in arguments, you know, sending requests to a server and getting a response back in JSON and XML. Uh, And it does it in a nice, clean way. It does it so you can, you know, plug in different uh, filters and stuff, not different filters, different uh, drivers for it and stuff. So it doesn't have to use um, uh, curl, curl, uh, CURL. It could use another one, you know, or it actually doesn't even have to use it at all. You can just use PHP. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Can I just ask this um, Heartbleed thing? Because I literally just got like a stream of messages at like 
one minute before I was going to finish work saying, <laughs> I've got this huge problem. What was, what was the, what brought it all out in the news? I mean, was there a, a, a particular attack that just someone found it? It's been in there for for two years. Like, you know, they, they were able to pinpoint yeah. what it is and it's just a buffer. It's a buffer a check that it, they don't do. So it's a, mm-hmm. they're missing buffer check. And it seems yeah, to be able to... A... Go for it. Sorry, go on. That's right. Go on. Oh, I was just, no, like... just going <laughs> to say, like, <laughs> it just seems to be a big panic at the moment because I think it had obviously never been, really been discovered before, but now they've re- re- uh, released this proof of concept um, that it does work, so now anyone can get their hands on, on how, how it's actually done. So I think the big panic now is because the code's out there for everyone to get their hands on to, to do the damage, um, which yeah. I think is, is causing a lot of the hype about it at the moment. And they have, they were really quick to commit a a patch for it. So all you have to do, and a lot of the package managers, uh, like, you know, CentOS I did, I just updated using that, and they've been quick to, you know, release it. So, yeah, just update your servers pretty much and make sure that you're using, I think it's uh, G, like uh, 1.1.G or something like that, but you'll you'll find it online and heartbleed.com. Nice. Cool. Uh, Fraser, I think you might have a hot pick. I have, yeah. It's something that, I, that I've literally just thought about. Um, yeah. It relates to the security that you guys were obviously talking about last week. And there's, you, you mentioned all the technical aspects of security, but there was one element that you didn't touch on, um, which was like you know the, the whole social engineering side of of, um, of hacking websites and, and what have you. And uh, Chris Coy, the guy behind CSS Tricks, he's got a, a podcast called... Um, What's that called? The Shop Talk Show. It's not one that I generally listen to because I'm not a big fan of it, but it was a really interesting one they put out a couple of weeks ago. He had his, uh, Chris Coy had CSS tricks hacked um, a few weeks back and they actually managed to get the guy who did it. Um, wow. And then, yeah, and they had a they had an interview with him. It was it was really interesting, The just the discussions and how he went about doing it. And he basically, he got in touch with, I think it was Media Temple, who he hosted all his domains with, and he was able to kind of convince the guy on the at the call center that he was Chris Coyer and managed oh, to get the, wow. yeah and managed to get the password reset. And he was doing it with a couple of the the Bitcoin oh. gambling sites as well. And he was saying that he he didn't get a lot of money out of the Bitcoin gambling sites, but he was able by the same methods to get to get access, and he, he managed to extract like a few hundred dollars worth of of Bitcoin. But but yeah, it was just really interesting hearing the different ways and and how he does it and, and where he gets his information from. And it's literally like he'll he'll pick up information from social networking sites and all the information's out there. And he'll phone up and say, yeah, I forgot my password and I can't get access to my email. Can you reset my password or can you can you reset my email? And then, yeah, it just all goes downhill from there. Wow. Have you got, have you got a link to that? Because that would be um, great for sure. I need to listen to that. It will be – let me have a look. I'll try and dig one out. That is uh, so cool. Yeah, that's a complete – yeah, you're right. We completely passed on that. The fact, Yeah, social engineering and – yeah. Yeah, shoptalkshow.com and the, where is it? Yeah, and it's the March 24th episode. It's the third one down if you go to the website. But yeah, normally I'm not a big fan of of, of that show in particular. It's, it's, I think we've touched on the, the kind of things about it before. It's kind of a lot of, oh, yeah, you just plug in to do this and you just plug in to do that and you just plug in to do this. There seems to be a whole lot of that. Um, and it's very front-end orientated. So if anybody's not really interested in the front-end, then I guess it's not not one that you really want to subscribe to. I'm not really doing a good job of picking up. But uh, but this one episode in particular, I found, yeah, very... very it's an interesting, interesting. point, because like, we've kind of like covered a lot about the you know technical security, but then yeah. we've not really covered like, the, the human element, just ringing up. and Yeah. Because I had an um, SSH password sent to me via email um, <laughs> just the other day, and I wasn't like the registered account holder or anything like that. I just yeah. emailed them, and it was quite a big company. I won't name their name, but... I was shocked that they sent sent it to me. To be honest yeah. with you, was it Google? It was Google. Google. Yeah, I knew they'd uh, do that. God. <laughs> um, but even in terms of like, we've we've had similar not with not with domain registrars or anything, but we've been chatting to like people that have been holding domains for clients and stuff. And so, oh yeah, like such and such has has asked us to get in touch with you because we need to get access to we need FTP access or we need uh, access yeah. to change the name servers and like. Ten minutes late, you'll get an email through saying, "Okay, yeah, here's the FTP password." So, like, if it's that easy to do that, then I guess all you need to do is go and find out which companies are, are yeah, handling yeah. domains for for which other companies, and then yeah, fire a bunch of emails off, and you could yeah, wow. you could get go to town and yeah, yeah. Have a bit of fun. <laughs> nice. Uh, Ed, did you finish with your um, your picks of the week? I have indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lou, did you have any? Uh, I haven't really. I, I haven't been. I haven't really been doing anything to kind of to look down those kind of avenues. But 
I know, I know one thing I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that uh, working with Stripe. Yeah. But I, I haven't, mm. I haven't touched that since I last spoke about that. But one thing I thought about is with the site that I'm building, they're going to um, want to have like various payment options. One of those being like you can pay now or you can spread the cost. Yeah, and I'm yeah. hoping I'm hoping that that's built in. I haven't had a look yet. I don't suppose you have you toyed with that. Have you used it for that? So sorry, is that for like that's subscriptions it. or? Well, I guess so. I, I know that it's got subscriptions, but it, but subscription kind of goes on until until you decide you don't want to pay it anymore. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm wondering is like, can you actually allocate a fixed term? Oh, like I mean, a you credit must, card you thing. Must be able to. Well, yeah, you... basically. Well, I guess what they, they like a direct debit. I guess. Yeah. You can with PayPal, and I'm pretty sure you can do with Stripe. I'm sure you can, but I've not done it with Stripe. But uh, with PayPal, because I don't know, Fraser, if you're still doing it, that, are you still using PayPal for MU? Or? Um, yes, we are, yeah. Yeah, because we had to do subscriptions for that. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a nightmare. And I, I mean, I got it working, but it was hard to say whether it was working or not because you only really know when you get to the end of that subscription. Yeah. But, um yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can with with Stripe. I think I I think I've read it somewhere. Um, and if it's anything like the PayPal one, it, it won't be too bad. It's just again, like I say, it's testing. You know, how yeah. do you know that it's actually going to work until you get to that point yeah. where subscription runs out? I guess. Yeah. I'm already um, really nervous about the the switch to live. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> it a huge responsibility. So yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah it's, it's uh, it'll be a sleepless night that one. Log log log. Just yeah. log everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's how you know, so you know exactly. You can then replay. That's what I would, my advice would be. And it's really yeah. satisfying when it when it is working, and you know you, that site is generating money for people. Is quite. Oh, a good I'll be feeling, so. I'll be so chuffed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is this is one of the reasons why why I've, you know I want to make as much of it myself as I can, so that you know I can say that I made that. You know, so oh. fingers fingers crossed it all goes to plan. You've just kind of uh, reminded me of something, actually. Fraser, you were working on a Magento site, weren't you? I was, yeah. How did you That's, find it? Um, it's, it's been interesting. All I had to do was it was basically template and stuff that I had to do. I didn't have to get into the, the proper core code or anything. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's one of these projects that's kind of turned into a, a bit of a nightmare. We've The clients basically had this Magento store built for them. Yeah. And then they kind of come to us and say, oh, yeah, can you just make these changes to these product pages and change the layout? Which is like, yeah, fine, okay, we'll do that. So we did that for them. And then it was like the, oh, can you just make it so they get free <laughs> postage when they click that they yeah. want the free installation upgrade? And it's like, which is an option of the product. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's not as easy as that. We can either kind of hack it in the back, or not kind of hack it, but we can we can tweak it so that if anybody orders this product plus the price of the installation, if the total of the basket comes to those two added together, then we can say, okay, well, we can assume that they've, they've ordered the installation as well, so we can give it them for free. But... Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of that to be honest. And it's, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I've had exactly the same kind of experience, really. And uh, you know, trying to do hacks, but I think Magento, you, you just you have to learn, yeah. you know, exactly how it's done. The, the hacks eventually will come back and bite you. That's oh, the completely, problem, yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I think that's going to be a bit of a a bit of a horrible one. They, they had a, another request today as well. It was for the same check, but for the same uh, product option. They're like, oh. If they if they select this product option, then we want to apply a promotion, or we want them oh. to be able to apply a promotion code, which then takes ten percent off the value of the additional <laughs> bit for that that thing. It's like it doesn't work. That's simple. But that's the problem, isn't it? You kind of you put in a two line hack, and you think, well, okay, it's not ideal, but you know, yeah. it's done the job. And then something else comes along, and then your hack becomes ten lines long. Yeah, completely. And, and it's like in the end, you think, actually, we should have done this. Yeah, the right way, but it takes time to learn. Like that's the thing, yeah, because I've got no, no. So yeah, we ended so, up basically the resolution we came to that was we we quoted them. Okay, we can we can quote you a day's a day's work to do it properly, or we can do it the other way, which is just kind of assume that if their basket title comes to this, we can assume that they've they've ordered the yeah um, the installation as well, and then we can apply the discount based on that. But it's yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's going to be one of those. Yeah, yeah. I had a very same similar experience really where they wanted like they wanted samples for products which were yeah. like paid samples and they also wanted free samples which were like a, a smaller sample right I, I mean I've got it working but you know it's it's tricky to tell like how long it'll work for and <laughs> <laughs> hand it back and resign and get, and get another job <laughs> <laughs> exactly um, life cycle of any developer but um, yeah and because Magento caches a lot of stuff as well it and does, it's yeah. only when it flushes that cash that you, you find problems sometimes. But uh, yeah, 
Were yeah. you able to work out the cache, how it works, and to configure it? Not really, no. I mean, you can see in the back end. And yeah, there's two got... buttons in the back end, isn't there? For yeah. like, clear the something cache and clear the something else cache. And the, the something else cache takes a bit longer to clear than the something cache. <laughs> so it's quite a closed uh, black box then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can't just... Okay, if you were building like a Magento site and you, you didn't need to make any modifications, fine. But if you do, you really need to know what you're doing. You need to take yeah. time to learn what's going on. As we, you know, I've bought a book but I haven't had a chance to read it. So, um, yeah, it's, it is amazing software, you know, but mm. it, you need to know what you're doing, really, I guess. Yeah. I had a bit of success on magento.stackexchange.com. Um, I had a right. couple of like, absolutely elementary questions, so it, obviously people are going to be more knowledgeable about that kind of stuff than the, the trickier stuff. But, yeah, I thought that was that was quite a good, good place to go to. I put a couple of questions on there, and they were answered pretty, yeah, pretty quick. Yeah, I agree. I've had good experiences on that site as well. There has actually been a course on Magento published on Touch Plus recently. Oh, I really? I mentioned that before. I mean, Touch Plus is only like £10 a month, something like that. Right. So depending on what books you're buying and all stuff like that, it might might be worth investigating possibly. And plus, obviously, there's all the other content they got on there. Yeah. I think like um, like on most like versions of cPanel now, you've got like a link to like build a magento store in like three clicks or something and that's yeah. how powerful it is it for that from that perspective it is amazing but like say it's as soon as you want to customize stuff if it's if you don't have that configurability in the back end it's you know you know you need to know what you're doing mm. but yeah so i guess unless anyone else has got anything else to say uh we should move on to our, our week uh this week's topic which Let's we have it. actually stuck to this time so uh we're going to be looking at at coding Nizer. So um, I've kind of put a few notes together. Uh, I'm trying to think what's the best way to start, really. I guess to start off with, let's go around and get everyone's um, opinion of Coding Nighter and, 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 uh, and their kind of history with it, I guess. Uh, sort of random, uh, biggest supporter of Coding Nighter, Ed. Do you want to uh, go first? Hello. Right. Um, yeah, no, I am a supporter of it. Uh, uh, my history with it, I... I... I started with it in probably 08 at university. Yeah. Um, and then I used it th- uh, throughout that time just on my own little personal projects and stuff. And I loved it because, you know, it was a small footprint, two megabyte download, unzip it. And, you know, you've got this structure and you've got great documentation, great user base at that time. And, yeah, I was able to get things done quick and, you know, in a good way and, and learn some good practices, you know, with o- OO and MVC and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the helpers and stuff are great in it, and you can then learn from the source code and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, then I, when we, when we all worked together, you know, I, I was trying to, you know, bring it in and stuff. Unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we did, and we were able to then to start building code night of sites instead, you know, using the MVC framework, and that was awesome. Um, and then, you know, again, it, it, what happened is it has didn't get updated, um, and then. Things, you know, cooler things happen in PHP, you know, auto loading, namespacing, uh, PHP 5.4, you know, 5.3 stuff, you know, closures and stuff. And the nice thing about Code Nighter was that it was, you know, it could be supported on, I think it was like a 5.1 platform. So, you know, it had a really good base that if you were using shared hosting, you know, you could just, you could be certain that this framework would work on it. But then, you know, nowadays, you know, you want to be able to use all the latest and greatest stuff. And that's when frameworks such as Laravel, you know, and all these, and, you know, Cake, I think now it supports, you know, it actually getting updated and Kahana and stuff. So, yeah, I think the only, the one thing that kind of, it, it stopped me from like, from not, not from liking it, but from, you know, kind of considering it was the fact that the development ceased. Yeah. Um, but they, I, I have nothing but good things to say about the framework, you know, at the time. And it was, it was revolutionary at the time for, uh, you know, for, for a PHP framework. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I've pretty asked this question to you guys a hundred times, but so I guess tackle it from a slightly different perspective. Fraser, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, I uh, I like it over Laravel just because I'm more experienced with it and I find it easier and less. I don't know. It's just it's probably like a dumb man's Laravel. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's a good description, actually. Yeah, yeah, and it's I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it I think it is familiarity that that I do like about it. Um, yeah. Um, and it's yeah, yeah, it's just really kind of clear and concise. And yeah, I think another good thing, like like Ed said as well, um, 
the user base is massive and the documentation out there is massive. So if there's anything you want to do, someone's already come across that hurdle before and they've already answered it and it's available in 15 different places on the internet to actually work out what you need to do, um, yeah. which I don't think is quite the case with Laravel yet. I would agree with you there. And I think, yeah, like when you download Coding Nights as well, it comes with the uh, documentation as well, doesn't it? I don't know yeah. if Laravel does, but, um, but I think that's a pretty cool, cool thing to do. Uh, how about you, Lou? Well, good and bad. Yeah. Um, or just good or just bad, whatever you... Uh... He's a negative person. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I, I must say, I, I absolutely love Cody Knight as well. And if, if this whole um, situation recently about it not being continued and stuff hadn't happened, then I may well be using it exclusively. You know, it's... Yeah. It's kind of one of the one of the reasons that prompted me to try and make my own one is because Code Igniter decided to to see sort of kind of developing, and that's uh, and I decided I didn't really want to learn too much on any of the other ones just yet. I, it's still something I might come back to, but yeah. the thing that I the thing that I really like about Code Igniter is it in one way or another it kind of taught me how to it kind of taught me object orientated programming. It taught me how to understand MVC. The whole the whole syntax is just really nice and readable and easy to it's easy to write. Uh, the documentation I, I still haven't found another another um, repository or documentation for any other thing that I've used in code that's anywhere near as good as Code Igniter because you've just got you've got literally everything explained there and it's just nice and easy to navigate. Yeah. Um, it's the source code's unintimidating as well. Actually, I quite often. Whenever I'm trying to just troubleshoot something that I'm doing, I quite often go into an old coding night project and just go through their source and see how they did it. It's uh, for some reason I find it. I'm, I'm understanding source code isn't always easy, and yeah. um, they have there. There's been a few times when I've tried when I've thought, oh, I'll have a look through the coding night source and I'll see if I can understand what's going on there, and and I've been able to actually kind of get a gist of what's going on, and it has helped me. So yeah, yeah. Um, I've got so yeah. I mean, I've hardly got a bad word to say. I, I wish the the uh, the routing was a bit easier to work with, and mm. I'm not aware that it has too many sort of command line utilities with it. If it, you know, those are the main two for me. I think. Yeah. Well, I can say. I mean, we've we've covered in previous uh, podcasts. I'm not going to bang on about it too much, but we've covered MVC uh, in episode 12, and we've also talked about uh, frameworks in our last uh, podcast, obviously, but. I thought it'd be good just to look at, and um, I kind of just, when preparing the notes for Coding Nights, I kind of went to their homepage and tried to get back to what it actually set out to do when it originally came out. And, um, I mean, the first thing to point out is I think it started out as a blogging application in 2002 uh, called Machine Pro, and it's kind of evolved from there. But one of the things, uh, it talks about the goals, and the first thing it says is dynamic instantiation. I... Components are only loaded when requested, so it's only bringing in things when it absolutely has to, and you're not doing the whole, you know, throw the kitchen sink at that type technique, which I think is really good. And the two other main goals that it talks about, and, it, and for anyone who's like um, just getting into programming or, or maybe going on a university course or whatever, like one of the first few things they'll, they'll talk to you about in terms of good craftsmanship is well, the first thing is loose coupling and high co cohesion which is what Code, Code Knights are set out to do. And I think they have achieved that really well in the fact that like, their helper classes or um, their libraries are very independent and they work very well by themselves. So I think they have achieved that really well. And the other thing is component singularity, i.e. that one thing has an assigned task and it doesn't stray away from that task. I mean, how often have you seen it in other people's code where they started off doing something and then it's doing a load of other really specific stuff in that same method. So you might start off with something that's like a pagination class and then someone starts building like a logging, a big snippet of logging code in there at the same time. You think, well, they're two different things. You want to separate them, keep, keep them apart. That's what and again, uh, MVC is so good with, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I do have to say, and, and I agree with like the points that you guys have made that you know, Code United was great and it's kind of just got stuck in the past and it hasn't moved on. And I completely agree with that and that's a fundamental fundamental flaw for me. But those things that it states, it actually does really well. It's um, Ellis Lab, isn't it? That kind yeah. of, last year they said, you know, it is dead. they were actually trying to sell it, weren't they? I think was the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I, that, that rings a, weird, a bill. Yeah, it was a weird, yeah, it's a weird, no one's buying it. 
And it was all because I think because because they split off Code Igniter from a, you know one of their projects that they were doing like Engine Express or so, uh, Expression Engine. Expression Engine, yeah, because they're selling that, aren't they? Yeah, that's like their big. That's their money maker. And the Code Igniter was just a framework that they made, you know. And it was like, oh, we might as well just extract it, and you know, because Joomla's doing that at the moment. It's why like Joomla frameworks coming out, and they're going to they're extracting that into a framework. And then people, it took you know a life of its own, and people wanted to add things into Code Igniter. But Ellis Labs were like, no, I don't really want to because it will, of course, they merge it back into their branch, you know, into their project for Expression right. Engine. Yeah, sneaky. But I think I think we'd all agree that, like for me, I'm having to go back to um, a Coding Night site at the moment or building a new one. But they want, you know, specifically wanting Coding Night, and it's just so easy to use. And, and like oh, Lou said, choice. like yeah, the documentation is brilliant, and all yeah. the helper classes that are there for you are fantastic and really easy um but i thought I'd, I'd bring up a few of the things that i don't use on a day-to-day basis with coding nighter which i was just looking through the uh, code today and there's some really good things in there that i've never used and i'd be interested to know if you guys have used it but i mean to start off with the unit testing class does nope. anyone use that no, You're ruining really my testing. bloody. Uh, sorry. What's oh, am I? Yeah. Oh, damn you. Right. That's all right. It's oh, all this right. your test? <laughs> <laughs> the quiz. I was like, I'm no. Start writing the answers down. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I have. To, I have used their unit testing. It's it's okay. It's again. It's like yeah. this kind of simplified, which is good, you know, because these things makes people can you know can test and stuff. But yeah. So one of the main things that you, like you can confirm a data type that's returned. Um. Have you? I mean, have you used it for much before? I used I used it for a couple of my projects, just unit testing, and that before I used PHP Unit and stuff, because yeah. because you have to do it for a web interface. Really, it's like the migration library, um, right? And I suppose there's one point. You know, when you said that, uh, you know, like things uh, are uncoupled, you know, so you can and you can actually yeah. easily like use them on their own. Yes. I suppose that we had that like the whole discussion of like that's in the Laravel where. where you know, it's all to do with that framework. You know, if you're using Code Night, you can't really just take out the active record part of it and use yeah. it on its own. Um, but mm. you have those who get that in all frameworks, don't you? You know, this idea that you would love things to be able to, you know, pick and choose what you want. I want that router. I want that, you know, yeah. that authentication library and stuff. But, but Code Night does supply, support a lot of stuff out of the box. I mean, it even has like a shopping cart. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I'm, I saw that today and I was thinking, I don't know why I've never used it. I've always just built my own, I guess. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. The other thing I saw, and again, I don't know if it's probably just me and I've never heard of it, but um, do you, have you guys heard of trackbacks? I, I've never, I've heard of them, but I've never actually used them. Go, I know WordPress uses them quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's to do with who's linking to your site. Yes. And then you're. Oh, in, they're the pingbacks. For, yeah, for yeah. Like Google. Called, yeah. Then you kind of have like this, you know, then Google. It's good for SEO or something. Yeah, because you can see where your links are cut. Yeah, something like that. And then you can like have lists of, you know, these are the people that have linked to me. I'm linking back to them, and it kind of brings yeah. up this funky thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Cognice has got a class that does that for you as well. Uh, language class, security class. There's so many things. Sorry, I should say class for you, some of those. But um, <laughs> uh, so many things that are just – Class. Are in there already for you uh, is really good, but and and I guess taking it back a step as well. I mean, for anyone who hasn't used a framework, perhaps listened to our podcast last week and wants to know a little bit about what how coding art is structured. Well, as I said, it, it does use the MVC design pattern, which we covered, and then I guess it kind of divided up into like helpers and classes, libraries. Um, I guess. Does someone would someone like to tackle what helpers are? They're just um, general functions, really, aren't they? They're like a, um, a class is is like a, a chain of methods that you're using to to yeah. try and actually come out with something. But a helper function, I guess, it doesn't really care where it's being used. It's just it's just there to do something like yeah. um, like general like PHP functions, like I don't know, string to upper or something like that. That's a helper. But yep. it, it's not relevant to a product class or anything like that. It just does what it does wherever it's needed. Yeah, and I guess back in the days when we were writing like procedural code and stuff, and we'd have like a, a functions dot ASP or a functions dot PHP, which is all these stuff like, for instance, converting I don't know form inputs from HTML into escaping all the characters and all that kind of stuff. I guess they they could be considered helpers as well. Is that right? Yeah, 
Yeah, I think so. That's that's what I've got here. Yeah, I'll tell you something. I'm not too sure. <laughs> to, like technically, what it, when the the term hooks, what they mean by that? That's a, another thing that Cody Knight uses. I probably I probably use them, but I probably don't really know what what they're referring to when they say hooks. Is that like the same context as um, like hooks with Git? Kind of like possibly. I, I'm um, guessing it. It kind of like it's almost like a you tack it onto something that an existing event, I guess. So like if you you could put a hook on, say, like um, on an insert to a database. You could say every time this happens, do something else. Is that right, Ed? Uh, so it's it's hooking into. It's a bit of a weird way. It's really just trying to, as a hook into the execution lifecycle. So you know, like the app, you know, say uh, where before all class controllers are loaded, I want you to run this. You know, yeah. like it's providing you events. Yeah, events like in Laravel, which say you know this has happened. And then you can call a bit of fun- you know functionality, so it's hooking into the actual engine itself in certain locations and being able to run your own code there. Because right. with the framework, obviously you're you're going by what they say, you know, and their process of how they do things and how you know their engine works. So this allows you then to add in your own functionality. Maybe you want to call certain things at certain times, like maybe when you the co- controller, you know, before you exit the actual application, you know, send a request. You want to cache the request or something, you know, cache the output before it's sent to the actual user. So that's what it allows you to do. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess we should uh, move on to the quiz in a second, but I guess to really um, sum up coding. What do you, what do you uh, like about? Because did we ask you what you liked and not mm, liked about it? What I like about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the active records, the active record database. That was the first yeah. thing that I started using that I loved. That it's that to insane. me allowed me to be like, whoa. I mean, there's this whole debate now whether you use you should probably. I, I go by the fact raw SQLs probably best, uh, but yeah. you know it's nice for prototyping and stuff to use these abstractions. Um, that was one big one that I used to use a lot, and the form validation blew my mind when I first started, and everyone copied it. Well, I say everyone copied it. Everyone copied stuff like Ruby on Rails, but in PHP world, the form validation, you know, being able to do like re- required pipe trim, yeah. that was awesome. That that saved me so much time, like, you know, doing these things and providing it in such a nice uh, man, no way. Yeah, I think for me, um, the music code igniter is that you can get things done fast. Yep, completely and agree with that. I would say with Laravel, I wouldn't say that's particularly the case, but not, I think that's more about... Craftsmanship. I think, I think you can. I think you can. It's again. I think it's just. It's a bit. To di- know it. Yeah, and also I think it's a different because now. So you know, the nice about Kona is you can download it, and then you can you know it's the old kind of way of you, you know doing PHP. You know, you can download it and you just you know unzip it and stuff unzip, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's really nice. And then drag it FTP onto the server. You know, now with Laravel, it's very much you know you download a zip file that then you compose or install, and it, and it downloads a load of other you know dependencies. Um, I think, yeah. I think the the the, fun, I, I, the one thing everyone mick, takes the mick out of Code Igniter is dollar this. <laughs> you know, it's the dollar this load, dollar this. You know, and then the model name. You know, and that's because it is OO. You know, and and that's when facades came in with Laravel and stuff to make it so you could call it as if it was static, but really it's underneath. It's an instance. Yeah. Um, that thing used to annoy me a bit, but that's just because of the design architecture of object oriented programming anyway. So. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I think I guess the reason we've put it in this podcast series is to say, look, yeah, we do appreciate that it is. Well, you're going to people going to use it, aren't they? I mean, yeah. this is the thing, you know, and we look, I mean, this is again, like, you know, we learn, I, I learned personally a lot from Code Igniter and how yeah. it was made and, you know, the act, you know, the, the, the whole really the world around it, you know, so yeah, and, and I've, you know, made, you know, some good money out of, you know, shipping these things, the sites in Code Igniter and, you know, you, it's something you never lose because you always can go back to. It. I mean, just looking out, it's got a capture helper class. Yeah, and, yeah I just clocked that as well. <laughs> and yeah. it's awesome because you know you can have a look at the code and see how they actually make these things. So, yeah, it's and then of course uh, before we forget is uh, you've got like they have their own package manager called Sparks. I don't know if you ever get Sparks. So that was their idea that they you know you'd be able to create your own libraries and stuff and download and install them similar to you know you had bundles in laravel and now you had composer and pretty much all the php you know libraries now but um that was quite cool and i, I looked uh recently I, I posted one like a couple of years ago and quite surprised like, i had almost like a thousand downloads on this thing i was like well that's pretty yeah. cool and a smiley helper as well i mean that's pretty need, yeah oh, it's sort of it, yeah smiley yeah. Help. i mean some of these helpers seem to only have like one method in um i yeah. think I, I do think uh, I think the one thing that they kind of got wrong was they were trying to do everything. 
Yeah. Which, you know, and it's like then, you know, it's like, okay, you know, FTP class, well, it only does a certain amount. But, you know, say if you want to do an advanced FTP thing or something, you know, you're going to use an external library that's specific for that task. Sure. So it was kind of like they're doing all things to it, you know, everything, providing it all. Uh, yeah, so I think to sum up, you know, if you're looking for a first um, framework to play with, I, I don't think anyone here would, you know, disagree with trying out Coding Nights just to, for that initial learning process. Yeah, uh, you know, I probably, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, all right, you would. Okay. Um, well, I, no, no, I, I would uh, say, yeah, use it. I would, I would, because, you know, going into namespacing, understanding all that, to start yeah. off with can be quite intimidating. Um, it's funny. I mean, if you look at an example, uh, it's looking at back at Coyoniter, you know, if you look at actual code that it right, that's written, and then you look at something like Laravel, Laravel code actually looks a lot simpler. Yeah. It's a lot cleaner, but there's a lot more magic going on behind the scenes. You know, with Code Igniter, there is magic going on behind the scenes, but it, you are much more, you know, using the framework quite, you know, at how you would use PHP. Yeah. So I'm going to stop trying to sum this up because it's such a contentious issue. But um, yeah, uh, I think try it. I'm not saying stick with it and and keep using it, but for a learning experience, it's a really good one to uh, start playing with. Well, it shaped what frameworks are made in the PHP world, and you know, and and you get yeah. you know this framework, Codeniter, you know, other frameworks in other languages. So yeah, it is a very good sample subject, you know, to yeah. look at. So should we move on to your quiz? Yes, well, you know, yes. you've ruined, you've ruined the quiz. So it's, <laughs> no, uh, I have, I think it's eight questions, um, eight? eight questions, eight questions indeedy. And are you keeping scores? I will keep scores. Um, yeah. I think the best way is probably, I want to say first, uh, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Let yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're alternating. <laughs> no, 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 between, yeah. We're alternating yeah. between who answers first. Because, okay. yeah, because that way then, yeah. It's like listening to the Vicar of Dibley. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, what is the latest release of Code Igniter? So, what version is it? 3.6. <laughs> he's so, got the site on. He's got 3.6. What do you think, Mickey? Uh, he seemed incredibly confident, but he is. he could be blagging. You've been using he's- it today. I know, but I wasn't looking. Um, <laughs> I'm going to work on the basis he was blagging, and I'm going to go for uh, five. So you think five? Oh, I do, yeah. Uh, Lewis? Mm, I don't know, it's two point something. It's, Ooh, always, it's always been two okay. point something. Lewis gets the point. Oh. It's 2.1.4, and it was released Boom. in July of last year. Hang on, how did Fraser sound so confident with a wrong answer? I know, three point... <laughs> Because I thought it was whoever got in there first gets to answer first, so I thought I was going to like sit here being stupid. At least like give myself a chance of winning it with a wrong oh, answer. I should tell. I should ask who gets to answer first. Yeah, sorry, right. Okay. So Mickey, you get to answer this one first. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. What is the minimum PHP version required to run Code Igniter? Oh, I'm going to say. Oh. I, I, I mentioned it earlier on. Did you? Yeah. Wow, I should have listened. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say five point two. Five point two. Okay, and Fraser. 5.1, boom. 5.1, and Lewis? 5.3, I'm going to say. 5.3, okay, it's actually 5.1, point six. So oh. Fraser's got the point. Yeah, I heard you say that earlier. Yeah, you oh, see, not, someone that's listens. Not knowledge. <laughs> Fraser uh, makes notes throughout the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good one, because if Mickey's you've been using it today. So how do you load a model in Code Igniter? So not auto-loads, but how do you load a model inside of a like, like a controller? Why didn't I get first answer on this one? It's ridiculous. Uh, Lewis, Lewis get yeah. Lewis gets first answer on this one. This load model. This load model. Okay. And, and then and then this and then this model. Uh, or whatever you call it. Okay. Okay. Basically. And then yeah. Fraser. Uh, I'd say this load model, and then your first parameter is the name of the model, and then That's the second I mean. parameter is your alias. And then Mickey. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same oh. as Fraser. Yeah, Boom. that's, that's, that's two, what I meant. That, that's a point. I think you all were right, but Fraser knocks it out of the part with the alias part. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, an optional alias you could do. So, you know, so you maybe have a conflict with the model name. You can change, you know, this user to be this my user or something. Oh, okay, so I think Fraser yeah. gets a point there, and so does Mickey. 
Oh yes, so, it's well because you said it too, didn't you? You said the same. Yeah. So how there you go? How do you auto load a model in Code Igniter? So auto load, and it... this will go for Fraser first. Oh. oh, you put it? No, you just make one. <laughs> <laughs> Automatically loads. <laughs> I've never started a project from scratch on Code Igniter. I have to say. Um, okay. yeah, I just say you just create the the class. Okay, and and it then... automatically loads it. <laughs> it's um, timed out. I'm sure. Mickey, I think it's uh, right now. you go into the autoload.php file, and I'm hoping because I don't actually know that there's a models array okay. that you can add it to. All right, and then Lewis. Yeah, same as Mike. Or um, if you're using Composer on it, then using their method. Wow. Okay, you both get a point. Yes. Lewis and Mickey. So you're all tied to a piece. Okay, this is going to be good. Feel the pressure. And this is probably... I, I'm really bad at this. It's probably Lewis first. Go for it. What does is underscore really underscore writable function really do? Checks whether something is really writable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, is it to do with files or something? Uh... Is really writable. Is this is a coding night helper, I assume, this is, or is this is a coding night? Actually, not even a helper. It's actually like a, defo- a part of the actual framework core. This is really writable. Is really writable. I get. I got to know. It's is it a security precaution to stop tampering with files or something? Okay. That'd be my guess. And then Fraser. Um, again, a stab in the dark. I'd have to say it returns true or false based on if a tree is writable to really. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a question what does it actually do uh, yeah so what it does is really writable do I'm going to say it actually does write to the file and changes the file slightly I don't know how but maybe just something in like Ooh, the, uh, the right so you all you all get a point there because it is to do with checking if um, the file is writable but yeah. it's interesting because Mickey I th- always want to give you another point because yeah the way that it works out if it's writable is by actually writing to it so it attempts to write to it as well. Because oh, yeah. on Windows uh, servers, there's a problem with it. it. It is writable, actually returns true on Windows servers if, but actually it's, you know, if, even if it isn't writable. So I'm going to say you'll get a point, but Mickey, you get another one. Yes. The first time I've ever been on Leap. Awesome. Okay, so. Yeah, enjoy it. Four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this will be Lewis? Or who goes I'll, first? I'll go first again. You want to go first? Yeah. How do you call a controller route from the CLI or from the command line? Mm. I've never done it. So, so say if I've got a controller, yeah. you know, say if I've got the users under uh, forward slash show, you know, I want to show all the users. I don't know. Is the honest answer to that? I've, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a clue. I've never. I've never used the command line with Coding Line. Either. Okay, and Sorry. Mickey, that's all right. PHP space index.php space uh, users, did you say? Yep. Space show. And Fraser? What Mickey said. <laughs> <laughs> Can you both get a point? Yeah, I, I, oh, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I was going to ride code, your coattails no, to the finish. I thought you meant a specific coding night and method like Artisan or something like no, that. They just You just call the index.php page and it works it out. And it, it's quite useful for like cron jobs. And you can then write, use the is CLI request to make sure that it only gets run on the command line and not you know through a web browser. Uh, um, and finally... And actually, no, there's no, there's, mm, yeah, two, two more questions, two more questions. Uh, what function do you have to call to get the current Code Igniter instance? So there's a function, like a, you know, just a plain old function similar to a helper that you can use to grab the current instance of Code Igniter. Mm. I have no idea. Okay, so Mickey does know. Fraser? He's blatantly um, on Google right now. Because of all this magical oh, yeah. this variable, you yeah. know you've got the this variable. How do you grab I, that I instance? Was just gonna say, I was going to say just this by itself. Okay, yeah. and Luis? I think it's you have to use um, this and then ampersand and something else, and then I think something Ooh. like get instance or something like that. I'm going to give you a point. 
Yeah. Because, yeah, so the way you do it is you use the get underscore instance function and you kind of have to do a bit of a hack. And what it does is you use the, uh, you do a reference. So it's assigning by reference and you assign it, you know, say to a variable like CI. And what that does is the return thing, which is the code nighter instance, is actually you get not a copy of it, but that actual reference that is actually in, you know, in that instance. It means you can you can use their DB class inside of like helper functions and stuff yep. like that. That's Boom. what I used it for. Yeah, because um, yeah, it all runs through this this magic. But yeah, so this allowed you then to be able to grab that instance. But yeah, the, the whole assigning by reference thing Ty, is a bit weird because what you're doing in a sense is just doing a pointer to both of them. Both of them point to the same thing. So if you change one of them now, you've both got them. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Okay, so Lewis, you get another point. So it's neck and neck with Mickey and oh. Lou at the moment. This is the final question. And the person who gets to answer first is Fraser. Oh. What <laughs> helper provides you with the plural function? Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, what helper function provides you with the plural Oh crap! God, the language tonight has been disgraceful. It is awful. <laughs> is it? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't. I don't even know. Okay. You sure you don't want to just shot in the dark? Get plural. Get plural. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, Lewis. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google it now anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be really literal and say pluralize. <laughs> pluralize. So you use the pluralize helper. Uh, yeah, okay. okay and if, it, if it works, I will. And Mickey. You know what? I really should know this because I was looking at it yeah, today. Yeah, I, I told uh, you I've got that as a question. Oh. I, know, I should have made a note of it. Um, oh, man. Uh, You're gonna, it's going to be a draw. It's oh, be inflector like a, helper. Uh, you've just plural. Go- you've just Googled that. No, I haven't, honestly. Really? I just, okay, yeah, so you are right. Mickey wins. It's the inflector helper, which contains, yeah. like, allows you to pluralize, singularize, and camel case. Inflector. The inflector, I know. It sounds, oh. sounds, you know, pretty special. So you're saying I won? Uh, you did indeed, sir. Have a well played. Have a hand, yeah. You. you know, are you going to be a sore, lo- a sore winner or? You got lucky there. Oh, no. I'm gracious in defeat. <laughs> you're great, gracious in defeat, defeat average. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I think we need to wrap up because we've gone over the hour mark. Yeah, and, uh, uh, that was a good podcast. Yeah. Yeah, well played. Yeah. Um, but we will be back next week and we'll be looking at Laravel, I think. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Welcome awesome. to my And I'd like to say as well, if uh, people like sending emails and they want to send yeah. us an email with either a topic they want us to talk about or tell us that you love us or that you hate us, um, <laughs> probably preferably that you love us because we'll get all angry if it's the other one. Um, but yeah, we, we love getting your emails. We'll look at your who is information. Tweets. Fraser's yeah. very yeah. sensitive. Yeah. I'm very, yeah, very sensitive. Um, and we'll, we'll track you down and kill you if you say <laughs> bad things. No, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just, yeah, it just makes it worthwhile when we actually hear that, that people are listening and stuff. And from what we can tell from the stats anyway, we're getting a lot more listeners um, these days than we have been. So, uh, yeah, tell your friends and give us tweets and emails. Absolutely, 300%. And Fraser, you need to sort out yours and uh, Justin's ad for your website. That's going to be our outro ad. Oh, right, perfect. I actually, yeah. uh, do you know what Talking a few weeks ago about trying to work out how to do auto tune, I worked yeah. it out on GarageBand. And I, 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 I made a, I made like a little bumper for tweet of the week, but it was just horrific. So I deleted it. And then, but I'll, I'll make that one. Oh, that sounds great. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. I'll speak to you then. All right, goodbye. See ya. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at three devs and a maybe dot com. Or follow us on Twitter at the number three, devs and a maybe.